Yeah, I thought it was always a, a city. Not complicated to get from here to there, from A to B or nothing like that, but. The street out here was very busy. I mean, like even backing out of my own driveway was a challenge. East Avenue was just booming with businesses. This is East 19th. Everybody's like family around here, pretty much. And nothing much goes on, but working people. The energy division was right here where the scrapyard is. That was all Zern's buildings there. And then they had the foundry over on 12th Street. I lived over here for a long time and I had no complaints about the streets or the neighborhood. Uh, you were used to it because, you, you know, you, you were a kid and your parents did it and then you started driving and you did it and uh, it was no big deal, really. In the area where I was living at over here, it was, it was pretty easy. You know, even if you were running late a little bit, you didn't have to go way around that way to pick up the Bayfront Avenue, you know, just take the bridge right there. How long have you lived here on East 11th Street? On East 11th Street, uh, 24 years total. And how long have you lived in the city of Erie? 81 years. So, okay, <laughs> you would have been born in 1937 when they constructed the McBride Viaduct. That's right. Can you tell me what the McBride Viaduct has meant to your neighborhood in, in both your lifetime? And the in my lifetime, it's meant a lot. I work um, actually across the bridge and so it's it, it's kind of it was really inconvenient when it closed. It provides a lot actually. It's hard for people who don't live here to understand how important it is to us. Well I used that Vidoc quite a bit when I was younger too I, since it was shut off but uh, I go to the other uh, route now that the Bayfront Road then it's not so bad. I put the highway in and cut the road off. I mean, for those of us that live here, it was the greatest thing that happened. It, it was really a big deal, and uh, you know, to see the tracks get shuffled over and you know, bring a highway down through there is really great. You know, um, there's occasional times where you use the connector, but it's always so busy and crazy there. So you just take the long way around. I think the bridge is really necessary that it stays there to get people especially in this area right here, easy access to the Lower East Side. Actually, everything's, yeah, that everything that's down there, that's the easy access instead of going all the way around. Now, you can barely even walk across it without there being problems, or I know that there's been holes in it now, and it's kind of sad, but it was a good uh, portion of our history. And the sad part about it is a lot of these the politicians that are in office that have voted against this were born and raised on the east side of the bayfront. It's easy to feel uh, like you're alone down here. Yeah, Erie's behind at least 10, 12 years easy, you know. Behind times. When the bayfront avenue came through, it came through a lot of woods in the wooded area over that way. So, the, uh, Traffic coming off of 90, you know, had access to around there, but that was good in that area because that traffic kept on around. It's a smart location where they put it in because there's so many crucial roads that, that pass through it, like 10th and 12th and everything. You know, it, it's nice to have because, but when you're coming south or west or east, however they put it, there's no way to get off of Buffalo Road. You do have to get off here and then loop all the way back around, which I says, when you go across the Buffalo Road bridge there, I still think they could bring a ramp up right behind that and not even take that out. But along this area here, they don't have no way to cross. People say it's not as safe to walk along the, the Bayfront Connector uh, sidewalk. Do you feel that way? Um, I can't say that, and I can't. Uh, it's, it's completely safe. I mean, there's kind of like a guide rail there. You know, it's, yeah, it don't bother me at all, really, you know? It just, it feels, it's almost like dangerous to go across, you know, it, it kind of sucks. Because uh, you have to wait for like a long pause in traffic, then you have to haul it across because the lights don't last too long. When I ride my bike, that and 12th Street are the two worst intersections to cross. There is a sidewalk over there, but I mean, none of that stuff's been like properly on maintained. The north side of the street, though. Right. What if there was one on the south side? Of the street? Well, I think that would help. I truly do. I says that, you know, if you you had a choice, you know, to be on one side or the other, depending on which way you're going. I mean, I, I think it could definitely be a safer alternative. I don't want to say dangerous, but it is it is a little bit a little bit more stressful. They go across. They have to cross over there at 12th and uh, to Bayfront Avenue. 
time I go across there, I, if somebody rallied me, I said, you got to have four or five pair of eyes, pair of eyes to watch this, this section here, you know what I mean? It'd be really, really good if we had to start off on the south side, um, if this were to be torn down, which is probably a definite. Well, the drivers on the Bayfront, they're going too fast. They're not paying attention. They're reading their, their iPods and whatnot. And even just coming out of this street alone, they're, they're coming around the blind corner and they're not paying attention. It wasn't thought through completely, I don't think. You know, I think that there could have been a better design. I says, you know, we eliminated the, the viaduct, which, you know, could at least bring you to Buffalo Road. But in my opinion, the money it takes to fix that viaduct, they could uh, put an off-ramp over there. To me, I would say for less money if you don't have to acquire any property. I did use it to walk across because um, we did live above, um, um, pretty much above Buffalo Road. And then you could see like the trains. We used to just stand there and watch the train go under you. It's really cool just to do that. Um, and then you could honestly, you could see so far out. And then there was always, you could have a nice view of the, um, the fields that are there. And you'd have, it's just, it's nice. It's one of those kind of strange higher up places where you get to see just beautiful parts of the area. The view, when you get to the top of the view, it's like you see a lot, even from here from downtown, that's pretty much far. When it was this, right, people would have to come down East Avenue and there's like a boat launch at the foot of it and everything and there's so much you can see on the way down. I just believe from a financial standpoint and actually what it does, the, I mean, we have a road, a bridge that's, you know, literally right beside it. The bridge needs to come down as far as I'm concerned. I was underneath that by dock and I looked at it and it's in bad shape. And in order to fix it up, you'd probably have to tear this down and fix, build a new one. You can fix it up. It uh, wouldn't do any good. And, uh, I even remember where the holes used to fall through because the decking was getting bad, you know. And uh, you'd, They'd have to cut little squares out and put some steel or something in the bottom to hold the cement back in. But How long have you lived in Erie? Uh, a couple years. Where'd you come from? Uh, Pittsburgh. Oh man, what's it like coming from Pittsburgh to Erie and we're having this argument about whether or not a bridge should be torn down? Oh no, there's bridges everywhere in Pittsburgh, though, so, you know, it's not, it's not you know. Everything's, everything's different no matter where you go. But it looked like they would want to keep the bridge, you know, but, you know, life goes on. It'd be a pretty pretty hard punch to the gut, you know? Um, we all feel like, like this is part of us, and uh, it's just, it's important that it's here. And for us to, I mean, it is only like one block, but for us to take the, the connector, it's just less convenient and everything. And if this were to be gone, you have to cross the tracks uh, in passing through here, and it's just, uh, I, it just wouldn't feel right. Okay, can you tell me, and I'm just going to pick a random year here, let's say, 19, let's say 1955, Okay. in the economic boom of the city of Erie, before decline began in the, the 60s and in the 70s. In 1955, what did that bridge mean to you? That bridge meant a lot. I was graduating from high school in 1955. I graduated from East High. And we used to walk that bridge all the time to get over to our friend's house, uh, ride our bicycles over it. My parents drove their cars over it um, to get to, uh, my father worked at uh, Meadowbrook Dairy and um, uh, Sunita milk plant and that was on the other side of the bridge and we use that for my parents to get to work uh, every day uh, cars go over there what would was going over it constantly day and night but for a while before I had a car I mean we still even used it just to walk across and it was really just a beautiful bridge it's art to me I think it's art it's neat it's gotten neat neat artistic things over there. Um, I just think it's a classic thing. It's, it's classic, you know? So I think it should keep it going, keep it in the heart spirits of keeping it up. Like I said, it's kind of an atmosphere. It feels like we're being ignored. Um, so there are so many representatives from, from the Lower East Side that come and they all say the same thing about saving the bridge and how much it means to us. But 
it ends up being like it just falls upon deaf ears. Do you think that um, since he went to that meeting before CPR went to Harrisburg, do you think CPR is right in, in what they're trying to do to save the bridge? I'm not sure. I mean, some of the things I overheard were that it was about they were making it a racial issue, and I don't think it's a racial issue at all. And I don't think that we need to be uh, so emotional about a bridge because bridges are built and bridges come down. They, you know, they have about a 50 year lifespan and we don't need to get so attached to it. So as a historical monument, it's not, it has no emotional impact for me. But then again, I've only lived here for 10 years. I guess the original ones that come up with the, the bridge in the beginning, uh, they seen that, uh, um, they probably seen that it would be a quick access, you know. But they thought building the Bayfront Highway would, would, would uh, eliminate that. Do you drive across the connector or do you go down to Downing? We usually go down to Downing now and then go up and around. It's been closed for so long, like, we all drive, so we'd go over the highway or go down Downing or something. So it's kind of really, it's useless to us, but at times we still would like to have it. Because it was the only, like, really means over the rail line, you know, from this side. You know, it was the only, you know, connector going over without, you know, sitting at a rail crossing or, you know, going over. And, you know, you could get down Ash Street, but, you know, because that goes under the rail line over there. but to be this far over and not have to like backtrack west, especially if you're going east, you know, that's how you cross it without having to wait it. Cause if you like, you go out to Downing Avenue down there, they switch tracks a lot. So a lot of times that road can literally be blocked by trains, you know, while they're switching, or you have to go all the way out to Franklin Avenue, the end of 12th street and go over it. Well, she thought that if they tear the bridge down, it'd be worse. You know? Cause even when I go over in that area, I have to go down here and take my, my color uh, I think that's McCullough. That goes across them tracks. Downing? Yeah, Downing. Downing, yeah. I have to go down there and take that to go across over there them tracks on 12th Street. If not that, then I have to go around here and take Broad Street and pick up the, the Bayfront Highway, see? And that puts me out the way. Now they're telling us use uh, Ash Street. Ash Street is so narrow Mm -hmm. That semis and stuff and that can, they can't go down. They can't go down there, and when they get to the prison area, there's that dip because of the bridge, that they can't use that. Well, they said, well then go to Downing. Well, Downing is several blocks away. Do they expect these children to walk all that in the winter? Right, it's a lot of detouring around the city. Like, makes things longer than what it really are, and. As I said, the Buffalo Road Strip, it's, that's kind of like the only street that everyone uses because it's so connected to everything. But going around Downing, going around Ash and Parade is just detouring a lot. I grew up on the way on the west side of uh, Cranberry Street, 17th and Cranberry, and that was the slums too. <laughs> or not too, but that was more like the slums. So I upped myself a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so moving to the east side was, was an improvement at that point in time. Oh yeah, right. I wanted to move on the east side with the Polish people and yeah, like I am, you know. But even that, it just feels like we're, we're being ignored um, with the, the, the condition of the streets and uh, like the police don't really patrol down here that, that much. Um, it just feels like we're, uh, we're not a part of the city, to be honest with you. The only thing that we share in common is proximity to downtown. Uh, I lived down in the Baltimore area for 10 and a half years, mm -hmm. and uh, we're behind here uh, in a big way. You know, 10, 12 years behind. You know, they're just putting uh, traffic rotaries in, Waterford and stuff. All down south, they've been there for years. And there's certain parts of 12th Street that doesn't have sidewalks. Yeah, it's kind of like the casino. That would have been a big deal for the east side if the casino could have got built down here in the Hammer Mill property, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, Ian Murray at the time was the only one on city council that was for it. Uh, I just moved back to Erie in 2005 and I was watching this stuff on TV. And I wasn't real familiar with it until I moved back. 
And that would have been great for the east side. That really would have given it a big boost. Everybody's property would have, you know, went up in value, and there would have been some hotels and gas stations and restaurants getting built over there on East Lake Road. And, you know, that flippy guy is running for office again. He screwed all that up. It just, it really would have made the east side take off. I'd like to see some uh, road improvements. I'd like to see, uh, in some areas, I'd like to see them clean up the sides of the Bayfront Highway. And that might be because I live over here, you know, and I'm being all honest when I say this, if this took place downtown, further down or whatever, where the city's seen it, but if you go right here above Broad Street going up towards McClellan, you'll look, you'll see like six what were flower beds when they first opened that Bayfront Highway. Now they stand about this tall with weeds because the landscaping company, and it's not their fault, they're told to mow the grass. I know, and you're looking, you see all these weeds and everything there, and so it's just like general neglect along the Bayfront connector. Yes, but that is the city responsibility because I've been on the phone with PennDOT. My opinion, if it was down on the Bayfront, it'd be taken care of, you know, right along the water. That would, they'd do something about that. I have seen businesses close. Uh, businesses have, have uh, uh, pe people's homes have depreciated. The value of my home when I bought it was one price, and now it's so low, uh, I have to stay here until I die. Because I'll never get out of my home what I've got into it. But since they put the connector in, it feels like people can just like bypass us without even have to, having to look at us. East side always, you know, is last in line. Do you think the bridge has something to offer as a pedestrian park if they cleaned up the area? Ooh. You mean with grass on it and stuff? Maybe. That's a possibility. If you if you could fix it up a little bit, it, it could be interesting. Something nice for your neighborhood, perhaps? Yeah. Well, I'd like to see people get together doing something, particularly a, a garden type area. You know, world resources under the bridge used to be like in the trash business but I think they only deal with recycling material now like cardboard and that kind of, if they still are. You go over the viaduct there I mean it's not like a scenic route or <laughs> nothing like that. I said I mean you're in an in industry area I mean you know and that's what you're going to see is industry you know you see a scrap yard and you see a recycling facility. It's a really good bridge and it's a piece a huge piece of Erie's history and I'd love to see it definitely saved. Overall, you know, it's just it's just a good asset to Erie, you know. But you're the first guy that ever came through here really asking about it, you know, because, you know, we're, we're only a couple thousand feet away from it right now and yeah, nobody really asks you. It's it's all about the money and stuff anymore, you know. It, I don't know, you know, them people making a big deal, like I said, I, putting a park there was one of the craziest things I heard in a long time, you know. But I think the Bayfront Connector is pretty much a highway. And you don't walk on the highways. The convenience of having it back would be great. I mean, living on 11th and East Ave, I mean, I could use it every day, so. Personally, I'd like to see a, a pathway just for pedestrians, um, that they don't even need to be near the traffic. I, I think what the people are really concerned about is the safety of the kids. For me, it's always been here. So it just kind of, it feels like it's part of the community. I mean, it'd be no different than just removing like a, a, a street.